felt like we were real life storm chasers because we'd go into our briefing, we would get on a call with a weather specialist, and he would tell us where the best clouds were. My name is Amanda Verricchio, and I'm a lead test engineer at Pratt & Whitney. The lead test engineer is both the first and the last line of defense. We're kind of the first look at getting real data with the engine running. We can use analytical models to try and validate designs in advance. There's other things that we really need to go do the actual physical test. We do all kinds of testing. We've done emissions testing, performance, operability, and my specialty for a few years now has been flight testing, where we take the engines up to altitude and we gather data at various altitudes to see how the engine performance works as we go up at altitude, because it's different than how we run at sea level. We had to go test various climate conditions. So we flew way up north to Iqaluit, Nunavut, which is just south of the Arctic Circle, to run cold weather testing. They had to issue us Arctic survival gear just so we could make it through the day. It was so cold. And then we would fly south to Yuma, Arizona to do hot weather testing. We would hop in the plane and we would go wherever we needed to go in North America to find those perfect clouds to get that data. I'll never look at clouds the same way again after that. I went to a all-female high school. They didn't have those shop hands-on, you know, really techie classes, which, you know, was fine, but it wasn't where things are now, where everybody's got science and technology courses. So when I had talked to some people and decided maybe I wanted to become an engineer, I remember my guidance counselor looking at me and saying, are you sure you don't want to do like teaching or nursing? I was one of just 16 students in mechanical engineering to start, and I was the only female from day one. But flash forward four years later, and I was one of two that graduated in four years. We had some transfer, some do the five-year plan. So I was pretty proud of myself. I went from a all-girls high school to a seven-to-one male-to-female ratio college. And when I hired in at Pratt, I was quite often one of the few females in the room and usually one of the youngest by like 20 years. So quite often, especially when I first started flying, I was the only female on the plane for a while. The good news is we're not there anymore. My high school that I graduated from now has a first robotics team and I go back and help mentor them. So they've added a whole bunch of STEM courses and being able to see kind of the opportunities presented to those girls for science and technology and having careers in engineering really promoted for them is really fantastic. It's very cool to kind of see what women can do once they realize they're capable. Because a lot of times, you know, without that exposure, you can't really find your true passion for something. Being a test engineer, I like to describe as living life in the fast lane. It's very fast paced, very high pressure. There are some days where I'm on the plane flying around and you know, you kind of look out the window for a moment and you go, I can't believe they're paying me to do this. I like thinking that, you know, I play a small part in making sure aviation is safe and making sure that you can get me and your family and your friends from point A to point B and not have any worries. You can, you can get on a plane and you're not concerned because you know we did a good job.